A nation's capital city steeped in history. Built by the Romans and built again after the Great Fire of London. Historic and iconic buildings conceived and constructed hundreds of years ago when no thought was given to accessibility for the disabled and people with hearing or visual impairments. Even the world's first underground railway opened back in the 19th century, a rich historic lineage that brings its own challenges. But London is also a thoroughly modern city, preparing to host next year's Olympics and Paralympics with accessibility for all, a cornerstone of the project. Paralympic multi-gold medal winner Baroness Grey Thompson explains the benefits of all the work that's being undertaken at historic tourist attractions and throughout the transport network. My experience of accessibility on transport is, is really positive in London. I mean, there's been massive changes and improvements in the last 10 years. Every black cab is wheelchair accessible, every bus is wheelchair accessible, and there's huge amounts of the undergrounds that you can get wheelchair users on and off. So there's, there's so many places you can go. It's not just for people like me in wheelchairs, it's for mums with children or with prams or for older people. And it's not just transport that needs to be accessible for everyone who visits the city before, during and after the Olympics. The London Eye is in my top five of UK sites to see, partly because it's just a stunning piece of architecture and engineering. And it's just absolutely beautiful on a clear day. You can see for so far. But accessibility isn't just about being able to get around. It's also about what you can do without spending a fortune while you're visiting London during the Games. The Ness family from Norway found out just how far their money could stretch on a day out in the capital. The London Transport Discount Oyster Card was the first step. Then it was off to the horse guards near Buckingham Palace for the changing of the guard. The Ness family took advantage of the variety of food on offer at Borough Market to grab themselves a spot of lunch. A family stroll in one of the Royal Parks. Before some hands-on activity at the Science Museum. We need to come back because it's, uh, we don't have no, enough time this time to see everything. When the Ness family return, there'll be even more for them to see and do. Games legacy projects like the newly built Haggerston BMX Bike Park have been funded in a way that allows local disadvantaged children to use the facilities alongside tourists and budding Olympians. I've always been very pro-Olympics and I was hoping that things like this would kind of happen and they have, so I'm, I'm very pleased. And I think a facility like this as well, because of the maintenance, the accessibility, it's, we should be able to keep it going for, for way, many years past the Olympics. London's really committed to making a difference and making the Games as open and as accessible to as many people as possible. And if we can't make positive changes because we've got the Olympics and Paralympics, then, you know, it's, it's never going to happen. Paralympic multi-gold medal winner Baroness Grey Thompson's athletic exploits have taken her round the world, but some of her favourite days out are still spent in the UK. Cardiff Castle is in my top five of days out. I grew up in Cardiff and it just brings back really happy memories of childhood. The accessibility in, in Cardiff Castle is pretty good. I mean, it's such you know an old building, but they've they've tried to adapt it very sympathetically. So um, they haven't just sort of slapped down ramps everywhere, which actually you know would take away from the feeling of getting around. But they've thought about how you can get to every different part and experience it, um, and it just makes it a lovely way to kind of experience history. The accessibility to the London Eye is absolutely brilliant, so there's ramps and the staff are really well trained um, and actually they hold the pod as well, so if you're in a wheelchair you have that little bit of extra time to get on. It's in a beautiful place on the South Bank and it's that anticipation as you sort of rise above ground level and you can see more and more of the city. Whitby features in my top five of days out because it's the beach 
and it's a beautiful part of the world and also they do the best fish and chips anywhere in the whole of the UK. Brighton's an amazing place because it's incredibly diverse. Um, you know, it's kind of shops, bars, restaurants, clubs, um, and it's just a really lovely place to be. I love Edinburgh Mile because uh, I used to compete there, uh, and it's possibly one of the hardest races <laughs> that I've ever done. But um, it's kind of the shops. I like shopping, and there's probably no better place in, in such a small space. Edinburgh is an old city, um, and that brings some challenges. But I think in actually the whole of the UK, we've recognised in the last 10 years that we have to make it more accessible for everybody. And the local people will be welcoming visitors to next year's famous Edinburgh Festival in between the Olympics and the Paralympics.